This is Matt Cohen for Matt Cohen Photo Workshops. We just got finished with a series of critiques from the Gilroy Workshops, and like I did with Marysville, I wanted to show some of the things that I did and what worked and what didn't work, and maybe compare and contrast from some of my students so everybody can kind of have a better idea as to why certain pictures work or don't. So I picked these, um, some of them are good, some of them are not good, um, so we'll just go through them. Um, so this is kind of, you know, when I get to a rodeo, I want to walk around and see what's going on, and see if there's anything happening that I didn't know about that somebody forgot to tell me about or something. And I'll do this, you know, I'll walk a lot before a rodeo just to see where everything is and see if, you know, my friends are around. Um, and so while I was walking around, I saw this little girl roping and I just didn't have enough time. There were people walking through here and it, it just, it, it never worked out. This was the first picture that I made and it was really the only salvageable one because too many people were walking around and there just wasn't enough room to set up. Um, this is kind of what happens when you don't plan. This is what happens when you see something that you want to shoot and either you are too careless to think about how you want to present it or there just isn't enough time. In my case, it was a little of both. I saw it and I really didn't have any kind of sense of urgency to get over here. And so this is what I was left with. Um, the horizon is not straight. There are things in the background that I wish hadn't have been there. And I wasn't low enough, right? I'm, you know, waist high and I should have been all the way down here. So this is not a great picture. And I thought, okay, well, maybe let's see a little bit of crop straightening and black and white. Let's see what it looks like. So this is not a good picture. It's very close. If there had been a big white truck over here that the sun, you know, maybe bounced off of and got some highlights here or on the rope or something, but having all of this go to silhouette when all of this is already dark, you're, just, you're losing the definition of the silhouette, right? You can see the rope, you can see her hand and her arm, but then everything starts to kind of fall off after that. There's not enough separation from the background. The, the tones are all very dark in this one because I had to overexpose it. I'm sorry, underexpose it. <clears throat> so I didn't show you this because this is an example of a good picture. It's just, um, you know, a way that I tried to salvage this picture, but oftentimes, most of the time you can't, you have to get it right. You have to at least get it in the ballpark. And this one just wasn't enough. And so I'm left with this, which just kind of reminds me that I blew it. So that sucks. Again, you just, you want more of her against the sky. And if I had been lower, all of this stuff would have been lower. She would look bigger and there would have been all the separation that you would want for a silhouette because it would have been against the sky. So that's why this doesn't work. It's mostly in here where the background is swallowing her, you know, everything about her, her shirt, her pants, her hair. It's just, it doesn't work because there's not enough separation. This is a behind the scenes one that I did put a lot of thought into. So this is Koi. He is a minister and he was praying over these guys before the rodeo. And so I've seen this happen. I've known Koi for the whole time I've been shooting rodeo. And in general, these guys will line up in a circle around him. And so I'm looking for not a clean picture of Koi. I could have a clean picture of Koi at any rodeo whenever I wanted to, you know, just a portrait or, you know, just him looking out over the arena. What I wanted was a sense of place and, you know, reality. And so if it was just him, this could have been anywhere, right? But letting these guys in, this guy has his vest on already. They have their hats off, their heads are bowed. So clearly they're praying and with the shallow depth of field, I got him in focus and a little bit of him, but everything else is out of focus. So this is what I want, right? Could this have been framed a little bit better? You know, maybe, I don't know, it's, it's not really conforming to the rule of thirds because he's right in the middle both ways, right? He's like almost dead center in the middle of the frame. 
Again, the rule of thirds, though, is just a guideline. And this is, given the constraints of where people were standing, this was the one that ended up the best because you can very clearly see his face, he's in focus, and then I have these things to kind of frame him and they're out of focus. So is this perfect? No, but this is definitely a usable picture. And it came because I was walking around looking for the gaps in between these guys to try to frame him. So there was a lot of thought that went into this, even though it's just a candid behind the scenes kind of picture. All these guys are taller than I am and they're not invisible. So you have to look for those little gaps in between people, in between their arms, maybe in between their legs. Um, you know, you just have to look for any kind of space that you can use to get the picture that you want. This is another example of one that I just completely blew. Um, I guess I was, I think this was right by my camera bag. So I was changing lenses and I saw this, but by the time I saw it, it was over. Right. So this picture is, I don't know, I guess here is where the focus is. This guy's completely out of focus. All of this stuff is out of focus, but you can see, like I was talking about in the other critiques, it's not out of focus enough to be mush. You can still tell, like you can still see these are, you know, bits of straw in the background. You can see, you know, all of this, it's, it's not good. So this picture, I needed to be right here, like literally in their shadow on the ground, you know, a foot away from them shooting up like this. That's where this picture is. And there's nothing, no way of walking around anywhere here standing up that this would have been a good picture. It's just not a good picture because it's a pedestrian kind of angle. I was standing up, they were kneeling down. If somebody's kneeling down, you want to be either right on top of them or right below them, but you have to show the depth. You have to show again, the separation. So you want them to be in focus and you want all of this stuff to be out of focus. And I was shooting with a 24, 1.4, these are some of the same things that I was talking to Dan about. You have to be really careful what you leave in focus and what you leave out because, you know, if I would show this picture to somebody, they would be, they would say, why, why is this hat in focus and everything else in the frame is out of focus? And why is it so far away? Because you could be, I could be right here and I could be shooting the edges of his fingers and the hat and, you know, they, those things could be in focus and everything else could be out of focus and that would have been okay. But to have the hat be such a small part of the frame and have it be the only thing that's in focus just makes this picture bad. And then you take the angle from, you know, the, this three quarter high angle when it should have been all the way on the ground shooting up at them. So this is, this is just a straight up throwaway, which I will do as soon as this is done. Um, I left it here because I wanted, I wanted pe you know, people to see, like I don't nail every single one of even everything I see. And then you take out, the things that I don't see, there's a lot of missed pictures going on, but it's all the more frustrating when I see something and it doesn't work. And I, you know, can instantly say, oh yeah, I just blew it because I wasn't in the right position. I didn't recognize it fast enough. By the time I said, oh yeah, I need to be lower. These guys were finished and they were standing up again. And I'm not going to sit there and say, oh yeah, we please pose like you're praying again. I'd never do that. And I don't recommend that you do it either. So um, it's hit or miss and you have to pay attention. You have to be looking around because if I had been doing that, even while I was changing my gear, I would have been able to get over here faster and maybe had 30 seconds to play around and make a picture that was way, way better than this. So this is a huge missed opportunity. Um, and I hope that it's apparent why, you know, something like this is a good picture and something like this is a terrible picture. So this is another 24 1.4 and this is not a good picture, but I wanted to kind of leave it in here because it shows you exactly how narrow the depth of field can get even at 24, right? So you can see that like the G is out of focus and the Y is out of focus, but the R is in focus, right? Because just that little curvature of the belt buckle, um, again, the rider here, but the legs of the horse are out of focus. So this is why you have to be really careful when you're shooting at a wide aperture and very close to things because the depth of field is going to get narrower than whatever you're shooting. So whether it's a face and you get the eyes in focus and the nose not in focus or this belt buckle where some of the letters are in focus and some aren't, 
you really have to kind of manage things in the frame so that either if you're using the shallow depth of field, you want to put everything the same distance that you want in focus, put all those things um, in the frame the same distance away from you. So what could I have done? Well, I could have shot from here to here and then all of these things would have been relatively the same distance. So this would have all been in focus. That wouldn't have been a good picture. This probably wouldn't have been a good picture one way or the other, but it does show you the razor, razor thin margin of error that you have. Um, you know, again, that, that zone of focus goes like this, right? You can, you can see that the axis of things that were all the same distance ran right like this. So you have to line those things up when you're shooting at a narrow aperture, I'm sorry, a wide aperture like that. Um, so that you can not have it be distracting. You, not everything has to be in focus, but it has to make sense, right? If Gilroy Rodeo was in focus because I was shooting from up here down or something, and this was all the same distance from the camera, but then this started to fall off, then that would have been one thing. If I would have shot it so that only the horse and the rider were in focus and everything was out of focus, okay, that makes sense. But having like random letters out of focus and then in focus and then out of focus again just doesn't work. So the only, again, the only reason why I included this was to show that even at 24 millimeters, when you would expect more um, more things to be in focus in the picture, when you're at 1.4 and when you're inches away, this is what happens. And so you have to kind of control that, figure out if what you're doing is going to make sense or if it's just going to be a signal to people, oh yeah, he shot with narrow depth of field and didn't control it enough. So these three, um, I guess not this one. So these are, you know, kind of just two different pictures. One that I just increased the contrast and lowered the exposure just to kind of get the sky the right tone that I wanted and kind of put these guys into a shadow a little bit. Um, this is a little bit sloppy. I didn't really have a whole lot of time to do this. And I wish that this side of the frame had been better. Or if I had gotten closer, you know, maybe down here and just had the picture be something here. But this part of it bothers me. It's just not helping at all. Um, this one's a little bit better just because of the position of these guys is better here. They're kind of, maybe they were just climbing up here and arranging themselves, but it just looks kind of sloppy here. It looks better. They're all, um, they're all looking out. They all have their hats down. So this one is clearly a better picture. This one could have been in color, just like this one was, it would have looked more or less the same as this, but I just decided, um, I like the cloud pattern and I didn't necessarily need the color. So I put this one into black and white, but again, you know, it's an extreme angle. I'm right below them. I'm very close to them. We saw some other pictures where, um, you know, they were just kind of like snapshots, right? So you look at something like this where it's just, you're standing, you're not worried about what's going on in the background and you just have these guys standing around, right? This looks like an iPhone picture. This looks like, anything that you would see if you were just walking around. But if you go here, like you would definitely tell the thought went into this, um, you know, the, the framing of it all and where I was and the, the decision to not let the sky blow out, um, all of those things contribute. So you just, what you, you don't want your picture to look thrown together or like somebody else could do it. And that's what this is. Like, there's just no, um, there's no art going on here. This is just, there's, you know, shooting at 4.5. So your background is always going to be, you know, more in focus than you would want. And you have these bags and bottle of water and all of that. Like there could have been a picture here, but it would have been at a wider aperture and much closer and arranging them in a way that was pleasing instead of having all this nonsense going on in the background. So not to pick on Jay, it's just a good example of why, you know, you just can't shoot from eye level all the time. You have to move it around, get low, get close, look for the weird angles that aren't going to look like everything you see on TV or in other people's pictures. Again, you have to get close. Um, this was not the 24 1.4. This was the 14 to 24. So I didn't have 1.4. So I wasn't trying to go for super narrow depth of field, but 
I wanted the detail, so I put it up to 4.5 to get a little bit more detail, uh, a little sharper. And I got really close because that's all there is, right? If you, again, going back to this one, if you're this far away, you're not going to see the details on their faces. You're not going to see really the intensity or whatever. But when you get really, really close, all those things start to come out. His head gets bigger in the frame than everything else, right? That's a really important thing. If you look here, like their heads are all the same. And because you're far away and the background isn't far enough away, it's all kind of the same thing. If you go here, you know instantly that you're supposed to be looking right here, right? And then you're rewarded by the details and the brim of his hat and his mouth and, you know, a serious look on his face. So always, always, always get as close as you can and then back up if you need to, right? That is a cardinal, cardinal rule. You have to do it. So I wanted more out of this one. Um, I don't really like shooting... Um, at 200 behind the scenes. Um, but, you know, again, I saw this and I had to make it happen before this guy put his shirt on. So is this great? No, but, you know, it, it's kind of cool because it looks like, uh, you know, it looks like a prison picture, but it's at a rodeo. Um, so, you know, I like this one, even though this isn't a great picture, it is a good detail kind of picture. Like if you come out of a rodeo with all these bucking pictures and all these really conventional pictures, it just gets boring. But if you can throw in, you know, pictures like that or pictures like this, like even though these aren't the greatest pictures, when you mix in pictures like this from a rodeo that you shot a thousand pictures at or something and you have hundreds of action pictures, you want to at least show people that you're thinking. You want to show them that you're not just there for target practice, for stuff that's happening out in the middle of the arena. Show them that you can craft pictures out of something that people wouldn't think were a picture. So again, none of these are great. Um, none of these are going, uh, you know, in any kind of best of or a book or anything like that. But as far as just like, you know, behind the scenes kind of things that adds depth and variety to a set of pictures, I'm going to keep those. So this isn't really behind the scenes. This is just like after the ride. Um, I just, I liked how the coil was in this hand and he's gathering the rest of the rope with this hand. Um, this is a pretty famous brand of horse. Um, so I like that that's there. Um, this is one of my clients. So this picture will be important to them. Um, because you can see the patch on him and then the logo on the saddle pad. Um, so this one, again, not a great picture, but I just liked how the rope was arranged and that it was clean and, um, you know, that, that I could get everything about him, which is the important part of the picture in focus, even though I was shooting at 200 and F2. So I don't know. Do you need the horse's head? No, you don't. Uh, you know, do I like where it's cut off here? No, it's not the best. But as far as being a useful picture because of these logos and because it's not an action picture and all of those things together with the brand of the horse makes it a usable picture. Um, okay. So I got these out of order. Okay. So as the wild horse race was getting ready to start, we were, uh, so it's not safe, right? The, the wild horse race is chaos. Like they're spilling six really wild horses out of here and three guys on each team are trying to control them and jump on and do a lap around there. It's way too dangerous to be out in the middle of the arena looking through a long lens or something because you're just going to get nailed from the side or behind or something. So I didn't want any of that to happen. So I shot underneath the fence. Um, this is Dan. So I wanted, I pulled this picture because I wanted to, you know, kind of give you a, a sense of where we were shooting from when all of this was happening. So these are the, this is like the nearest shoot. You can see this green thing right here. And these guys are getting ready to spill these horses. So this is good. Um, both Dan and I were laying completely down. You can see Dan's cameras a couple inches off the ground. If that, this is what you have to do. It's not comfortable you know, it hurts your back, it hurts your arms trying to deal with the camera when you're like this. It's not fun, but this is what you have to do because if you were standing up here, these pictures would not be 
the next couple that I'm gonna show you would not be as good because it would just, the background wouldn't line up. What you were shooting wouldn't be big enough in the frame. It just wouldn't look as dramatic. You wouldn't have as good a background, all of those things. So this was the first picture that I made as they were coming out and Dan has a very, very similar picture to this here. So let's look at Dan's picture. Again, um, Dan's focus was on the horse. Dan's picture included more of the shoot and Dan's picture, these guys were out of focus. We talked about this during his critique, so I'm just showing you, but it's good because of how low he is. Look at where the crowd is in relation to these guys. Look how big they look and look at the separation, them and the sky, the horse and the sky. Like you can see everything that's going on. If you were standing up, then these guys would look smaller and the crowd in the background would look bigger and it would come up to their waist and you would lose all of this. So that's why shooting from down here is good. So what did I do differently than what Dan did? I didn't want that sign that Dan had, like this doesn't help, this is just distracting, right? So I want just enough of the shoot gate to show that's what's happening. And then I focused here, right, because in general, you want the closest thing in focus and then have it fall off. If he was in focus, then he would look weird. If the horse is in focus, then both of them would look weird, which is what happened to Dan, right? There's not a whole lot of difference between these pictures, but the devil is in the details. This being out of focus, this being not really in focus, and this being in focus just ends up looking off, where if you go here, it's as expected, right? It doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just what you're expecting when you're looking at it. The closest thing in focus and then the focus falling off after that. Is this a great picture? It's really not. Is this a better picture than Dan's picture? It is because it's less distracting because again, this is out of focus and this is in focus. So I don't know, somewhere in here was the picture. And for me, that's here, right? They're further away, so all of these things can be in focus. Clouds that fade, um, you know, lighter here and darker here because of the sunlight, and then you have like this extra, these other teams going on here, so that's all good. I like how the horse is jumping up here, and I like how they're in focus. And again, even though they're further out in the arena, I'm so low, and the crowd is so far away that it's really small in the background. So I like this better than... Um, than this one and I like it better than Dan's, but it's still not great, right? It's still not great. This picture happened very, very shortly after. You can still see that there's wild horses running. This is Randy, the pickup man, and he was trying to, you know, get everybody out of the arena. This picture came directly from this picture and this picture, right? I, I noticed what was happening here. Like, okay, there's something going on. Something's going to happen. Either there's going to be a big wreck right here or when everybody's done and they're gathering up all the horses, maybe they'll be all in a line here. So I was prepared. I liked what I saw. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew I liked this view, right? I liked the dirt here. I liked the, the thin strip of the of the crowd back here and I like this big blue sky. So I said, okay, whatever happens in this event, I'm just gonna stay here because something is gonna happen at some point. And this happened. So I just like this picture. As you can see, this one is under consideration for the best of 2018. Um, again, dirt, this thin strip of the crowd here and then the sky and then his gesture and the fact that he's in focus and everything else is out of focus. So. This is a legitimately good picture and I like this one. And hopefully you'll be able to see how this doesn't work in quite the same way because all the action is over here and there's no action here. It's just not balanced right. And if I would crop it to here, then it would just look weird. So I didn't do that. Um, this one is kind of cool, but it's just the action isn't quite as good as it is here. So I got caught in between these two, right? But then I stuck with it and this is what came out of it and again, this is a good picture, right? Nobody I don't think can say that it's not. So we'll go with that. That's that's what happens when you stick with something, even though it might not be working on the other pictures that you're doing, but you have to not just look at the subject, look at the whole scene, sky, crowd, dirt, and then make it into a picture.
which I did. Basically, I was just waiting for something cool to happen in this zone where it was close enough to me that I could, um, you know, make a picture out of it, arrange it in the frame. It wasn't too close that it was all this. There was no context or whatever. Um, there is context. All of this is context, but there's not too much. He's not too far away so that there's no separation between him and the background. So space, the background, the way the light is, and then the separation between him being in focus and all of this stuff being out of focus. All right. So this is the scene that we saw when we got there on Friday night. Um, the Again, the people that did the full weekend got to come on Friday night, and there was better light um, than you get at midday, right? But this presents a problem. This isn't a real picture. This is just, um, I, you know, I just wanted to see what it would look like once I got down. So there's cool light. There's this, um, this cool sign here, but you looking at people on horseback and people standing up here, they are completely swallowed up because they're not getting any light. There's no light that's hitting the people that's not hitting everything else. And most of all, of this is in a shadow because the light is really low and it's coming from behind. So right away, I knew that you want to be low because you want as much of the sky to be the background and less of the fence to be the background. So the way you do that is by getting low and shooting up more. But these are where they're coming out. So most of the action is going to happen here, right, in the shadows, not getting any direct light at all. So you have to keep that in mind that a lot of these pictures, like especially right as they're getting ready to throw, coming out of shoots, you're not even going to be able to see it because there's no light going this way. All the light is coming this way from behind in the side. So what do you do with that? Well, when you get low, like I'm clearly lower here than I was here, here standing, here lower. You can tell because of where the fence is in the frame and where these guys are. Look how much bigger they look than the people here. Does this picture work? This picture does not work at all. Again, because the light is coming from the back and the side, there's no light getting on them at all, which would be okay if none of this was here. If this was just out in a big open field and the, the sky was you know unbroken and came all the way down, this would be fine. But at a rodeo, you're always gonna have fences and shoots and people standing around and there's no definition because of that, right? All of this just melts into the background because you can't see what he's doing. You can barely see what he's doing. You can't see where this horse ends and the ground begins and the same over here. So again, not a good picture, just kind of using this to show what the challenges are when you shoot in a situation like this. So this one may be a little bit closer just because of how they're arranged in the frame. But again, you're losing all of this. There's just no separation involved here. And when you're looking at a silhouette, like this silhouette is okay. This one, not really, because it's just getting broken up by all of this. But when you stick with it, then you get something like this. So obviously, um, I waited until they came closer to me. Like you can tell that they're closer, they're further away here and then closer here, bigger in the frame more sky as the background and then as you start to look you can see the separation between them and the background the separation between the horse's head and the background all of this reads way way better than this this is all lost all of this like if we crop this picture let's crop it in a in a weird way but just to you know kind of show how much of this frame is not doing anything for you at all Right, there's nothing going on. Like you can see that this is a horse, but there's nothing here. You can't even see that there's a horse over here. So there's just not enough light getting here. If the light had been peeking through the fences, um, if there had been no fences and the light was just coming through like it was in the top half of the picture, then you would have been fine. So let's look at the top half. Right, you can see this is the beginnings of a picture here, right? But it's just not enough to carry this part of it. Hopefully that's clear. So then when you look at this picture, 
everything works, right? You have a silhouette here, you have a silhouette here, you have a silhouette here, and they're all against a clean background, and you have the cool light, the rodeo sign, so this all works. And again, it's not a secret. It's going to be in the best of. So this was the scene. These two pictures didn't work, again, because of the shape of the silhouette and where the horizon is and where the clean backgrounds are. This one, I waited a little bit longer. I didn't try to fit the bottoms of the horse in because again, I knew that that was lost, right? I knew from looking at this picture that anything that happened right here in this zone was just gonna be lost. There was not enough light to define anything. That's how this picture came to be. It didn't happen right away, right? This was one of the last runs. So I, you know, there might've been 15 or 20 runs that I shot from here, 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 and then finally here. That's the progression. See what's working, what's not working. Use that time in between the runs to, to try to figure it out. Is this, is this a picture? No. Is this a picture? No. Is this a picture? Yeah, I can make a picture out of that. Um, this is just another version. Um, you know, even though you have nice, pretty light, doesn't mean you can't make a black and white out of it. I like this one because this is just such a generic rodeo picture. Like, this could be a stock picture. If I did that, right, I could put this on uh, Shutterstock or something like that. And if somebody was looking for a rodeo picture to, I don't know, use in a news story that wasn't against or wasn't about anybody specific, that was just about, oh, some rodeo got approved or something, it wouldn't have to be the Gilroy rodeo because it doesn't say Gilroy, it's just rodeo. So this is a really good generic kind of picture. Um, will I use it for anything? No. Probably not, but you know, if somebody wanted, um, you know, like a, if they had a website that had a bunch of different sports on it, and this was the header image for the rodeo part of the site, that would be fine. But this one is really the best version of it. The color really helps, and the two guys really help, um, and then the, you know, that it's not just the naked rodeo here. That's like there is a little bit of um, interference here, which even though you can you can still see that it says rodeo, it just makes it a little bit more of a complicated picture, but in a way that works. So barrel racing, right? I'm gonna start here, because this was Friday night. The It was getting really dark, and to shoot, there wasn't a good way to get a silhouette, so I was shooting with the little bit of light that there was, which also worked because I could get into a situation where I was relatively close to where she is and the background was really far away. Look how clean this background is. So even though I don't like shooting the second barrel like as a rule because it's just a dime a dozen and there's really no skill involved in this at all. It's just figure out the right distance to, um, to fill up the frame with the rider and then uh, work on the what shutter speed you want and what aperture you want here for me, um, you know, I was shooting wide open because I really wanted this background to be as blurred out as possible. Um, and then you just sit there and wait for them to come around and you shoot. Like there's really nothing to this after you think of it. But this was the shot that was available to me because again, the light was coming this way. So if I was shooting barrel racing into this, there would have been no separation at all. It just would have been the background swallowing up everything. So that's why I shot here. I didn't shoot here on the other two days because the light was different and I didn't need to. So let's look at this. We were talking a lot about, you know, what makes a good barrel racing picture and what you want to see. And I said, you want to make it look like it's hard. You want to make it look like they're really doing something, not just sitting on a horse. And if you look at this, this isn't normally how a horse runs, right? They should, this horse should not be as, as low as this. This horse's nose should be like up here, should be three or four feet above where the barrel is. But, so I chose this one because of, look, look how much the horse is working. Like all the muscles, neck is all stretched out, serious flexion going on here. And then just the way the horse is stretched all the way like this, the nose here and the foot all the way back here, the dirt coming up. And again, the separation, right? I was able to get very close to the first barrel and in a in a an angle that the background was really far away. The background from here to here is 
I don't know, 70 yards or something like that. So if you're shooting at F2 with the 200, everything you want to be in focus is going to be in focus and nothing else. And so you look at this and it's like, okay, you can tell why this is a more interesting picture than this. Right? The angle, the light, the way the horse is stretched out, the way that, you know, there's dirt kicking up here, but it's kind of cool because you have this dirt, then you have this dirt, and then you have this dirt. It's all kind of cool instead of it just being one thing here. And again, this horse just looks like it's working way harder than this one, right? She had a better time because she was more efficient coming around the barrel and this horse stumbled. But this is a better picture because of the way the background is and the angle and, you know, being this low and seeing the muscles and the way the dirt is coming up. Let's look at a couple other barrel racing pictures. So this one, again, you know, there's no barrel in this one and you don't need to put the barrel into barrel racing pictures. I chose this one because, you know, the, the intensity of her face, the way she's holding her rein, and then the back feet pushing off and the, the front feet up in the air like this. I like the, the coloration on the horse's face. And again, I was able to control the distance. Like I'm pretty close to her here and the background is pretty far away. So I'm able to blur the background out in a way that's not distracting at all. So there's no way that you can look at this picture and not see this area right here. This is the picture. And then all of this other stuff is just there to bound it, right? You don't want to crop it. There's no, you know, there's not really any benefit to, to cropping it tight, right? That's about the most you can get just because of how high the action is, but then you're just losing more context, right? If there was something distracting going on here, then I would definitely do it, but there's not. It's just, this is where the picture is the most balanced, you know, rule of third wise. Um, she's in the top and she's on this side, so... Um, I, I left this one a little bit looser than I would for a normal action picture just because all of this stuff ended up working. Like it just, it gave enough of a, a boundary to all of this that it focuses your eye on the subject of the picture. So I like this one. Um, so if you look at this one and this one, these were both taken from more or less, this, you know, the, the same alley, but this one I was a little bit closer, like on the on the one side of the alley, and this one I was a little bit further away. So I like this picture better. I like the, um, so the background is better in this one. I don't like the telephone poles here, but you kind of have to go with that. But I like the light better. Um, I was shooting, um, this is more backlit than this is. So she's coming around the barrel and she's still on the other side. The sun is, you know, like coming down this way and here sun is coming down right into it so this one's a little bit backlit you can tell because i let the the background go to white like the sky is still the same here as it is here but this one is just um, a higher exposure so the reason that i like this one better is that it's coming right at me you don't need to see the whole horse and the way the dirt here is really cool i just really like this her face is good um, all of this is in focus. Um, and why? Because this was, I was shooting this with a 24 to 70. So I was closer here and then further here because this was with a 200. So that's kind of the difference that you can do between shooting from more or less the same space, but using a different lens. This one, the same. Um, I like this one because of the way the horse's legs are here. The dirt is definitely better here. The expression on her face is better here. Um, but this one's cool because of it's already kind of turning and I just like the, the mechanics of the horse's body here. Um, but you know, these are both good, but I think this one's a little bit better. And for barrels, yeah. Okay, so the next few are tie down and breakaway. We'll go through these relatively quickly. Again, depth of field, um, this is not good. You don't want something this big to be this out of focus, right? So this this is cool. I like this. I'm not going to throw this picture away, but it's 
I just wouldn't put this in anything, right? Because your eye is drawn to here and it's just, I don't know, it just looks off because it's not in focus. And that's, you know, that's going to happen when you're shooting things that are far apart from each other, but still in the frame, you have to make a choice at that point, whether or not you want to get everything in focus and have it look really bland or have it be real shallow depth of field and make an editorial choice that this is what's going to be in focus and everything else isn't. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. This is one where everything really came together, but this cap just came too close. If it was running a little bit more this way, then everything would have been in you know the same distance away. But just because of the way the calf ran, the calf is significantly closer than the horse and the cowboy. So this is like, you know, these two are basically in the same location, you know, down the arena. This one may be a little bit closer and just the way that the calf was running, it ran out of the frame. So this is a vastly superior picture, even though you can't see the calf just because there isn't anything distracting here. He has a cool look on his face. He is jumping off. The, all of this is in focus. You can see his hand on the rope. All of this is good. Where this one, this is good, this is good, but you know it is kind of a little bit late in his jump and then the out of focus. So this is a, a better picture than that. This one is a good example of when you just completely blow it, right? It's one thing to have the cowboy in focus and the calf out of focus. It's something completely different to have the calf in focus and the rider out of focus. So this one is a throwaway right after this because I, I don't care about this. You know, this, this isn't a famous, there's no such thing as a famous roping calf, right? So it doesn't, this doesn't need to be in focus and there's no reason for this to be out of focus. So this was just, um, you know, just the autofocus got fooled and I wasn't able to, um, to work the button enough to get the focus back where I wanted it because things were happening really quickly. Um, so this is just a throwaway. This happens, right? Even with the best gear, right? The setup that I was shooting with was 12 or $13,000, right? To get this, even a system like that can get fooled into putting the wrong thing in focus. You can tell it would look pretty cool, right? Excuse me. If she had been in focus or they both had been in focus and you had the separation of the background, this would have looked really cool. But otherwise, it'd throw it. So this isn't great. You can tell that this is out of focus and this is in focus, but it's far enough away and this cap is so small in this frame that it's okay. I could definitely see the rodeo using this for something because of the way the sign is and because it's such a, you know, kind of a classic rodeo picture. And if you if you were doing like a, you know, picture for a poster or something like that, you could crop it so, you know, less of the borders are there, maybe even square. Yeah. So if they wanted to do something with this, um, you know, they could drop some text over here. Um, you know, Saturday and Sunday, August, whatever, 2019, join us at the Gilroy Rodeo, right? Plenty of space here to drop text in. They could absolutely use this picture for basically anything. Is it great? Is it going in my portfolio? No, it isn't, but it's functional for what they're trying to do. So this works a lot better, right? There's no calf in it. The calf ran away. This is breakaway roping, and this is what happens when, the, when you catch the calf and the calf keeps running. It's... Um, just string and it breaks off like that and that's how you know you had a successful run i like her look i like the horse's look i like that all of this is in focus this is a good skid because some of the dirt is in focus and some isn't which gives it depth and then you have the rope breaking off and then you have the crowd mushy in the background so this is good i, I really enjoy this picture this one a lot the same as this one just kind of like a different look like the the way the dirt is going and the way the background is um, you know, just another version of it, not very complicated and not much different, but, you know, like I wouldn't mind showing people these two pictures because they're both good enough to carry it by themselves. Again, mushy background, all of this in really good focus. Um, the, the, you know, the, her expression on her face and then the dirt being kicked up, um, to the point where you can't even see the bottom of the, of the horse. Um, I like this one. This one again, this is kind of borderline because 
again, the steer is out of focus because of the distance between these two. I happen to think that the light is good enough in this one and the dirt is good enough and his expression on his face and the way he's holding the rope is good enough, but there are arguments to be made that this is a throwaway because of how out of focus this is. Could I have shot this at F4? Yeah, I could have. And this would have been more in focus, but then so would the background have been in focus. So this is good advice for me, like it was for Dan. You want to put yourself in a position where if you're trying to get everything in focus, you can be reasonably assured that the distances are going to be right. And the distances are probably not going to be right when you're camped out on this side shooting team roping because the healer is always going to be coming from behind the steer. So this is what it's going to look like most of the time. If they had been going side to side, then that would have been different because the steer and the horse and the rider would have all been the same distance away, but it just didn't work out like that here. This one I kind of got screwed a little bit by the direction that the calf went and I had to move where I was shooting over to the right more. And then what happened was it brought lens flare in. So lens flare is something that you can work with, but it's also something that it robs you of the definition, right? Because every, all of this stuff looks soft because the sun is coming from this way and it's kind of a glancing blow at the end of the at the end of the lens right it's bouncing off of the front glass and that robs you again of the definition of the separation and the sharpness all of that kind of stuff i still like this picture because of the way the light is and because the lack of definition here doesn't really bother me what does bother me is this pole behind her and the way that the rope is here like this is probably not going to be a catch this horse is going to or this cap is going to run right underneath it so not quite as good as it could have been but it's kind of like a happy accident like the lens flare i didn't plan on it but it definitely it definitely helps it could have been a, a cool picture if the calf had run in a different direction or if she had caught it or if the calf had been out of the frame and it was just her but again this isn't good right you have to you have to manage things like this. Like it's, I know, you know, it's not super distracting, but you know, think about it. If it wasn't there, it would be better. So I, I like these kind of pictures. I shoot into the sun a lot. I deal with the lens flare because sometimes it's cool. Sometimes it kills the picture. Um, but I really like how it's coming through here and it's completely blown out. And then you have like this wraparound lens flare kind of light going on here does it matter that the horse's head isn't in there no because she's so big like this doesn't look cut off by accident it looks like i was just making a picture of her and the horse is in there you know because that's where it was not i wasn't trying to fit it in i don't need to fit it in because the rest of the picture is good enough right the light this blown out area and then how the you know the golden flare going on here like this is all good and i like this picture i would argue with anybody who didn't. This one not quite as good. Um, you know, again, the light is really good, but I don't like this guy standing here behind, and the way the the way the horse is stopping is not ideal. Like this is not a bad picture. It's just not anywhere near as good as this is, and that will give you kind of like a, a cue to fitting the whole horse in when maybe you shouldn't because maybe. This picture would have been better if we just cropped it not square but you know what if we just cropped it here still not as good but you know better than it was still not as good as this right so even when you get great light like that you can just I don't know if, if the horse had been you know more of a traditional stop or if that guy hadn't have been there, or if I'd been a little bit tighter on this, maybe it would have worked out. But just look at this picture and look at this one side by side, and you can definitely tell this is just a better picture, right? Getting her face like that, um, the way the sun is, and the way the, the horse is arranged here is just taking away from it. There's dead space here, dead space here, and then this guy here, and here... Um, it's just part of the horse, and that's covered up by this lens flare, which is still it's still kind of cool. So I like this one a lot. This one is um, this one just missed.
This one I kept, um, this is the same run as this one, um, even though the white isn't as cool. I mean, it's cooler here and less cool here. This is a better picture because of how it's stopped. Like this is, this is the kind of stop that you would rather see here instead of the front feet off the ground. This picture is really made by the rope, the breakaway rope breaking off. This is baby powder that's um, from the snap of this coming off of the saddle horn. Um, and I like how it's just caught in the sunlight like that. So this is like a good detail kind of picture that you don't really get to see all that much because of the way the light is and the baby powder coming off of here. Um, so this is just a better picture than this one. This one again is you know similar to this one where um, you know I want the sun blowing out. I like how it's streaking kind of here. And then you look around and you can see the difference between when you're shooting against, when you're shooting out in the middle of the arena in a way that the sun can wrap around your whole subject. That didn't happen here. So when, when I was shooting the team roping and everything was happening right around here, I was never going to be able to get the kind of wrap around light. Like look how the light is going through the dirt here and it's all gold. And you look at how the light's coming through here and there's this flare going on and you look um, you know, everywhere that is not the guy, you have cool light, all of this. Golden, golden, all of this, even through here, even the wraparound light on the, the end of the rope, um, on his hat, and this. Like, this all really comes together. This is not good, right? These tents and this pole are not good. But it is my estimation you know, as somebody who made the picture, that this is still good anyway because of the quality of the light, because of the distances involved, because of the stop of the horse, because of where the sun was coming through. That is enough, in my estimation, to overcome the parts of the picture that I don't like over here. And there's no cropping or anything that I can do to get rid of it. I just have to live with it or not use the picture. And for me, this picture is good enough to use despite all of that. So this is the wild horse race again. I put this because you know, I wanted to show you know what it looks like to layer a picture. So again, 200 f2. So I'm shooting with a really really shallow depth of field, and these guys are in focus, and then these guys are out of focus. But you can still tell what's happening, and you can definitely still tell this guy is looking at what's going on over here because these guys are getting dragged, right? So he is more concerned about what's going on than he is about his own horse. So you have a layer here, you have a layer here, and then you have the background. All those things working together will make this a better picture than if it was just these guys floating through the air. It would have looked still, it would look cool. But being able to have them in focus and have all this stuff going on in the background and not be distracting and quite the opposite, helping the picture, giving it more context, giving it more depth, that, that's what makes this a good picture. Um, I really like this one a lot. I don't really get a whole lot of good wild horse race pictures. This one is a little bit unconventional because it doesn't even show the horse that's dragging them around. But having them be in the air and getting dragged like that and then having all the depth going on behind it makes this good. I didn't really shoot very much straight up bucking action, um, but you know I wanted to kind of show this as an example of, you know, we had ones where this... I'm going to pick on the same people again, but let's look at Dan's. Okay, so these are good, but, you know, again, these are Jake's pictures. He missed these, right, because he didn't zoom out fast enough. But then you look here, and so... I managed to fit it all in. And that's not the be all end all, but if you're not gonna fit it in, there really needs to be like a, a good reason for it. So here I wanted to show, this horse is definitely jumping and kicking, bronc rein, um, spurs in the shoulders. Like this is, this part of it's not great, but this is what you're looking for, right? The separation between subject and the background, the horse doing something athletic, the rider doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, some people would look at this and say, okay, well, you know, this is what I'm trying to do, this is it. It's not, this is, you know, I made like four pictures like this, five pictures like this for the, the whole weekend because this isn't the part that interests me. Like you should be able to do this 
Um, you never know what's going to happen, but this isn't the be all end all. This is just a bucket picture. So I like this one infinitely more, right? This is, I don't know if this is the same ride, you know, um, but you know, the same set. So what do I like about this one that I don't like here? The depth. I like how you can tell that the fence is out of focus because it's too close and then it goes into focus and then it goes out of focus because it's too far away. And then the in-focus part includes the horses and the pickup men. Pickup man, um, you can see a little bit of the crowd in behind and nothing is distracting. All everything, Every element in this picture is working towards bringing you right here. And it is paid off because, you know, this is a precision maneuver. This guy has to push the horse over, get the cowboy off. You know, everything has to be done safely. And he has to, you know, hold on to the bronc rein so that the horse doesn't run around the arena more. So all of this stuff happening at high speed um, and coming right at me. So I had to decide when do I want to make the picture and when do I want to bail out and climb up the fence? And so the answer was not very long after this because you don't want to take any chances getting run over because people will get hurt. Again, this is just a standard bucking picture. This shows kind of the power of the 200 F2. If you were shooting this at uh, 70 to 200 at 200 with a 2.8, all of this would be way more in the background. So the 200 F2 kind of makes this picture work where it wouldn't otherwise. Is it a great picture? It's not. It's just a standard bucking picture. And the only benefit to it really is being shot at F2 and having at least a little bit of separation between this and the background. This is what you have to do when you're shooting straight on because of the distances involved for you to be safe. You're still going to have to be pretty far away from this. And then the background is going to be you know, pretty close to where the horse is. It's not going to be far enough away to blow it all out. So you do have to do things either with aperture, um, you know, getting down to F2, or, you know, like this, shooting from the side. I could have been at F4 or something like that here and still had the separation because the background is so far away. Whereas here, the background's not that far away. So you would need to be at F2 to get it done. Um, okay, these last two, this is just kind of, uh, what happens when you shoot through the slats in the back of the chute? Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. The focus here went to the hump of the bull. You can tell this is out of focus, so this is going to be a throwaway. I don't need, you know, this part of the chute gate to be in focus. I don't need this part of, I need this to be in focus, and it's not. Um, so this one is just kind of on the same ride, but just like a different version of that. I waited until the horse turned around so you could get the, the flank rope and the chaps here, and then the, um, the stands out of focus in the background. So this is kind of what you're trying to do when you're shooting through. You wanna be as wide as you can, and then just you know, kind of take into account where the slats are and where the crowd is and what you're trying to do. Um, this is just a kind of a cool detail shot. You don't need to fit everything in from behind the shoots. Um, you can do detail pictures like this. Anyway, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, this has been Matt Cohen for Matt Cohen Photo Workshops. These were my pictures. Um, you can go back on my channel and look at the other critiques that we did from Gilroy and the other critiques from Marysville and my critique from Marysville. All that is on my YouTube. So you can go there and you can, if you want more information, you can go to mattcohenphoto.com slash workshops. The next one will be coming up in November. Stay tuned, sign up for more information.